Hello and welcome to Opponent Process. This will be the first of three presentations that talk about Opponent Process. This first one will be color vision, the next one will be neurons, and the next one after that, the last one will be about hunger, if I remember correctly. I'm not going to read each one of these slides, so uh, pause and rewind will be your friend. Uh, I just want to note at the very bottom of this that although the information that I provide may, uh, should be accurate, that it's not going to be all-encompassing. For example, for color vision, there are actually three different kinds of, of uh, theories that go govern color vision, and the one we're going to be talking about by Evald Helling uh, is actually only one of them. So let's begin. This is a rough representation of the eye uh, with part of the eye cut away. This is the part that light enters into, and this is the back part. This part is the optic nerve. This part in the back is called the macula. It's where most of your photoreceptors are, and this part inside is the fovea, which we'll talk about in a moment. The macula is where most of the rods and cones are. I guess you could say that this is where your 20-20 vision comes from. Um, where there are some rods in the outside uh, of the, the macula, not a lot. Most of your vision is here. So let's go on. The fovea. This is where your most accurate vision is. This is the part where if you were to join your thumb and forefinger together and put your arm out all the way with this OK sign, then look through the OK sign. That's about the size of your most accurate vision at a distance. Um, you, would, you might say, but my vision is very clear all over the place, not just in that small area. And you would be right. But your eye can only see a small amount of a very detailed area at, at any one time. The thing is that you have two eyes and both of them are darting all over the place uh, constantly. So the area that apparently looks clear is actually much larger than the area that is actually clear. Let's see, hang on a second. All right, this next slide is the in further inside the eye. This is not entirely accurate. It makes it look like there are only rods here. There are actually cones there too, but I wanted just to point out that the fovea is where most of the action is happening, where your most uh, detailed vision is. So what does this all have to do with opponent process? These are two particular cones. Uh, these are two different colors in the same cone. You have many, many of these cones in the back of your eye, but not... Uh, I don't know how to say this. If one is registering green, that particular cone cannot also um, notice red. This one, let's say, is noticing green, and this one, let's say, is noticing blue. But another red-green cone that's next to it might be registering red if there is red in the environment. So there's something in, in the environment that has green in it that fires the green side of the cone. That impulse goes down the optic nerve and registers in your brain, and you apparently see uh, green. But notice that the other side is not really working. This side is, this side is not. All right. But as you look at something green in this case, for a longer and longer period of time, that side of the receptor actually gets fatigued. It will get tired, just like a jogger gets tired. So this side is working, and this side is not working at all. But a funny thing happens when this side actually stops working. And what happens is it fires the opposite side in order to chemically balance the cone. So this side is actually turned off. It's fallen asleep, so to speak. And this side has turned on even if, and this is important, even if there's nothing red in the environment. So if you were to stare at something green, 
until that particular receptor turned off. When you looked away at a blank space, this side would be firing. So you might see spots or a shape in the color red, even though there's nothing there. This is what we would call an after image. So this may sound kind of unbelievable. Well, what do you mean if I look at something for long enough that a cone will turn off? That doesn't make any sense at all. So although, because of the way Screencast-O-Matic works, this is not quite what I wanted to show you. Here is a box with colored dots in it. What I want you to do is stare at the little plus sign in the center. Stare and try not to blink, try not to move your eye around too much, just stare at it. So let's stare together, shall we? All right, you can use uh, pause or you can go back to this later um, if you need to. What should have happened is at least some of the dots should have disappeared completely. Now, if you blinked or if you moved your eyes around a lot, those that disappeared will come back again. But some of them hopefully disappeared. That is opponent process. Now, if you'd looked away at a blank space, you might have actually seen whatever the opposite color is uh, for that. But for the most part, you should have seen some dots disappear. This is probably not going to work because I don't think I made the, the colors um, uh, distinct enough. But technically, if you looked at this image where yellow, green, and black um, are, that if you stared at this for long enough, to get the opponent process working and get black to turn off into white, get green to turn off and turn into red, and yellow to turn off and turn into blue, then this is actually what you would see if you looked away. Now, not that you looked away at a flag that was flying in the wind, but you looked away at a blank space. So you start with this and you end up with that. So. How does this apply to opponent process? When one part of color vision is activated, the other part is not activated. It is inhibited. Um, so that's really uh, all that, that opponent process is. When one part is on, the other part is off. They can't both be on at the same time. Please notice dichroma and achroma. Achroma means no color and dichroma means two. Now, if I understand this concept correctly, this is also a way that motion works. You can actually stare at something for a while if it's moving, say like a train going by, and that when the train disappears, it will seem as though things in the background are moving in the opposite direction because the, your sense of motion has become uh, fatigued. Anyway, I hope you've, you've liked this. I, I droned on for a little while please go to the next part about neurons.